how to get started in plumbing. That's what we're going to talk about in this video and we're going to talk about it right now. How to get started in plumbing. That's a question that I get asked often. Well, it just so happens that I have friends in town from out of state. So I actually have with me today a special guest, Todd Allred from Allred's Plumbing and Radiant, just outside of Seattle, Washington. Todd, how are you? Good. How are you? I'm doing fantastic. Tell me about your company. Where are you located? How could people get in touch with you if they hear something that they like and they decide, well, I, I want to call him and see what's going on? Our shop is just uh, south of Seattle in a city called Tukwila. Uh, you can reach me on the internet at allredsplumbing.com. Uh, you can call us at 206-305-9541, and uh, that'd probably be the best way. Fantastic. So, Todd, let me ask you this. You know, when people call me or send me messages, they want to get into plumbing. How did you get into plumbing? Well, uh, I got into plumbing because I needed a change in life. I found that I wasn't headed too many places, and I, needed a, I knew that I wanted to work with my hands. And I started working with my hands. I've, I moved to Seattle from Montana, and I uh, found a job as an apprentice. And I had no idea that it would take me to where I am today. Uh, but that's yeah, that's the short story. How many years ago was that? That was in 1989. 1989. Wow. So you got started. You liked working with your hands. I've almost got the same thing. You know, I was always in trouble. Uh, I, I was, you know, it didn't matter if if I was fighting or what. It seemed like I was always in trouble. And I'm, I'm just joking, really. I would never be that kind of guy. But it was something that – it was a job that I really took pride in. I, I love building things. I love fixing things. And plumbing literally lets you do that no, no matter what side you're on. Man, in plumbing, you, you, there's always something to do and always something to work at. That's correct. So – Tell me this, what was it you enjoyed about it when you got into it? I mean, I know you said you liked working with your hands, but what do you enjoy about just building? What do you enjoy about plumbing now? Let, let's, let's go to the end. What do you enjoy now? What I enjoy about plumbing is being able to bring fresh potable water into people's homes um, and take away the stuff that we don't want. Mm -hmm. Um, and that's when called I, sewage y'all just in case when I, when I, when I got involved in the trade and I saw the poster, you know, the poster, the plumber protects the health of the nation. I saw this as a noble trade and that attracted me. I, and I love that. It's funny because, you know, and you know, guys, Todd's a friend of mine and it's funny because I, I speak a lot about plumbing and I tell everybody, look, we, we don't always have to agree. Uh, Todd's non-union, I'm union. Todd's in PHCCC, uh, PHCC, so he gets a great training too, and, and he's also involved fighting for the plumbing trade, which I really like about this. But what I like about what you said, when I went to my first instructor training program up in Ann Arbor, Michigan, one of the gentlemen there was from New York, and we were talking about same type thing, how'd you get into plumbing? One of his best friends growing up, his dad was a plumber. And he, he'd go over there in the mornings to go to school, and his dad would leave the house, put on his top coat, put on his hat, and, and carry his briefcase out. And John had seen him just walk out like that all the time. And finally, John asked the kids, said, so what does your dad do? He said, my dad's a plumber. He's like, man, your dad's a plumber, and he always dresses so sharp and all this. Well, John talked to him later, and the father said, look, I, I like dressing nice. I, I like looking professional. He would wear that to work, put on coveralls when it was time to work and get dirty. And then when he was done at the end of the day, hang his coveralls up and go back to work or go back home. The fact that you say it's a noble trade, and I love that. The plumber protects the health of the nation. A lot of people don't understand that. How do you think we do that? Well, there are, by bringing fresh water in, that helps take the bad stuff away. Mm -hmm. And there's literally eight diseases that are that are that are major diseases that plumbing protects the health of the nation from we've long forgot about uh cholera we've long forgot about cholera cholera is so bad that it's it's been said that if you can be dancing at breakfast and dead by dinner wow and the last major outbreak uh that's that was used as a great example happened in over in india in 1830 i think it was and there was a festival and there was a farm upstream and they were using the river as a toilet 
and a bunch of people got sick, and it spread all through Europe. It spread up into the Middle East. It's it or uh, excuse me, it spread all through India. It spread all through uh, uh, the Middle East. It moved up into Europe, and it made, and eventually made its way over to the U.S. Killed three million people in three years. Wow, that's that's, that's rough. That's just one example of a disease that we protect the public from, and most people have no idea how bad cholera can be. You know, it's funny. I do videos on you know plumber versus electrician, plumber versus HVAC which I'm an HVAC technician also. A lot of things that I tell people is, look, plumbers are true protectors of the health of the nation. If, if an electrician does something bad, he can burn down your house. If an HVAC guy does something bad, you can be hot or cold overnight. If a plumber does something bad, he can wipe out a city. And people don't understand cross connections, so they don't see it like that. It makes it tough, but to me, I enjoyed learning it. I enjoyed the knowledge that I gained as I learned plumbing and as I grew. Was it the same way for you? Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. You, you never stop learning in this trade. No, no, you don't. And, and that's what's interesting about it. And I, I tell people all the time, you know, to be the top 5% in any industry, study 30 minutes to an hour about your trade every morning. You will learn something new. And, I mean, you will be in the top of your industry because most people don't do it. That's correct. How hard is it for you to get plumbers and, and apprentices and people into the trade in your area? Uh, it's not an easy thing. Uh, we don't have a group of people standing in line to, to get involved in our trade. That's not, that doesn't happen. And, and why do you think that is? Well, honestly, uh, the reason I think that that is is because of uh, media. The media back, back in the days of the Popeye cartoons, you know, and, and uh, cartoons presenting the plumber as being uh, having a cigarette hanging out of his mouth and, and sloppy and a big belly and, you know, butt crack pants and, and, they, and dopey and we can't speak clearly. And that created an image that's followed. And now you can go anywhere and people will joke about, well, gee, the butt crack, the plumber crack, right? I, I had that just the other day uh, on one of my, I guess it was one of my LinkedIn articles I wrote or something. Somebody said something about, you know, the plumber's crack. I was like, man, I wear Wranglers. I don't have that problem. So it's kind of funny. <laughs> uh, plumbers do have a, a bad reputation sometimes, but when I talk to kids, I tell them, look, every kid is not made to go to college. Every kid is not got that mindset. I would have never made it in college. Did you go Me to college? Either. Did you? What, no. what kind of? What kind of how did you, no, how'd you I'm, become a plumber? I'm a, I dropped out of high school when I was a, when I was a junior. I did the same thing, but and I ended then, up going back and, and graduating. I did eventually get my diploma because mm -hmm. I, when I enlisted in the military, they weren't going to take me unless I had the diploma, but I didn't do it through the traditional avenue of high school. I had to go back to an adult education center. I got that diploma. Uh, then they allowed me to enlist, and then um, I was in the National Guard. So after, after that ended, uh, that's when, well, during that time is when I, I moved to, out to Seattle and got a job being a plumber. Cool. So if you knew a young man, young woman, let's start off with apprentices. If you knew an apprentice, an, an apprentice, a helper in Seattle, someone that wanted to get into plumbing, what would you recommend to them in your area? Uh, the best thing to do would be to contact, well, there's two avenues. Uh, you can, the best thing to do is to find the local plumbing companies that exist. Um, that's very easily done through mm -hmm. social media. You bet. Uh, internet. Uh, find those companies and contact them. Most every company that you contact will be willing to talk to you uh, because our trade is undermanned. The other avenue is to go down and talk to the union hall and see if you can get on their list. And I know that the union's hard to get into. And, you know, we put links in here and we show people, look, this is how you go find out. And I think you've got, what, 26 and 32 in your area? That's correct. Okay. Let's go back before that, because I always tell people, and, and I've, I created this little mini course just for people wanting to get into plumbing, that literally ask them these questions. Do you want to do residential or commercial? Do you want to do uh, new service, I mean new construction or service work? And do you want to be union or non-union? Are there any other questions that you would ask somebody wanting to get into the trade you know, in the very beginning, if, if they – they just call you up and they say, look, I, man, I've seen Do plumbing. Do you breathe? Fields. Do you breathe? I know. Yeah, you, we'll take you. Do you, I mean, are there any other questions though, that, that they need to think about? Because to me, that kind of sums everything up to say, look, this is a good knowledge to understand before you decide what, what part of it to get into. I got you. I, I, I know where you're going. So what I try to tell people is that when you're involved in a trade, such as plumbing, 
every day you're completing tasks. Mm -hmm. Completing tasks is good for your soul and it's good for your spirit. Uh, you go home satisfied that you helped somebody, you accomplished things, you got things done, you learned. Every day we get that in our trade. Many, many other professionals that go to college and have that, that white collar, those guys can sometimes take months to complete that task. We get that satisfaction every day. If somebody wanted to go to work for you, if somebody wanted to go to work for All Reds Plumbing and Radiant, and we'll talk more in the next video about what all it is you do every day, but if somebody wanted to find you, you, I know you're on the website, Facebook, everywhere else. Are you looking for people right now? Are you, if, if a licensed plumber saw this video and said, man, I need a job, I'm in this area. Are you looking for people now? What, what, what are you looking for right now? We're, we're currently looking for plumbers and apprentices. Anybody that wants to learn the trade, uh, we're, we're open to talking to anybody right now. So guys, if you're in the Seattle area and you are interested in a job or you're interested in getting in plumbing or you're a licensed plumber, you're in that area and you want to work for a great guy. Cause look, I know Todd, I've known him for got two or three years now. Great guy to be with. I've been up to his shop. I love it. Check it out. All reds plumbing and radiant heat in what town? Tuckwilla. Yeah. Just in Seattle. <laughs> I'm Roger Wakefield, Lead AP, the expert plumber, and I'll see you on the next video if you don't get flushed.